Miniature Realms is proudly sponsored by Income Gaming, Cheltenham's premier friendly local game store. Check the link in the description. As part of all the new toys I've bought for Warhammer the Old World, this Kingdom of Britonia questing knight paladin on foot was one of the models I was most looking forward to working on. Welcome to Miniature Realms, my name's Stuart, in this video I'll talk you through how I painted mine. With the miniature prime black, I'm moving on to some underpainting. If you watch my videos, you'll have seen this many times before, but I thought I'd cover it very, very briefly. I'm using an airbrush here to apply a layer of white. This is mostly top down, but I do go in from the sides a little bit as well. It's more than a zenithal, because that mean really means from one single direction and going all the way around the miniature. But what I'm working here is to create a, a bit of a grayscale miniature where you still have some dark color left in the undercuts. So it's almost like it's shadowed already and that really really helps with the the base layering and the glazes i like to do now if you don't have an airbrush i recommend priming in gray and then you can do a white dry brush afterwards i still do a dry brush stage you can also do a heavy white dry brush over a black prime as well and that's quite often called slap chop these days they're all kind of linked techniques really and they've been around for years but they are really fantastic you can see me dry brushing as well. I'm, I'm actually being really gentle here. It looks like I'm being quite rough because I'm moving the brush quite quickly, but I'm not putting any pressure on at all, really. A mixture of circular motions and a few upwards and downward motions to catch it on the edges. And all I'm really doing is picking out all of the edge detail with some white and that really really helps again with those kind of glaze layers that I'm going to be base coating in. Now if you uh, haven't got a, a dry brush this kind of shape you can pick up some some makeup brushes that kind of thing but this one was available on Amazon you can get them from Army Painter as well these new sort of flat style dry brushes you can also get the the, the ones from Artis Opus which are excellent um, I use them for years I'm just trying out some of the cheaper options at the moment. Now what you're left with here is what looks like on screen just a white prime miniature but if you look carefully you can see that it is mostly toned there there are some gray shades in there and it acts a bit like a map and a guide when you paint and really brings out the extra details now for this miniature i'm starting with metallics and i'm starting with decayed metal from scale color or scale 75 and i'm going to use this as the base layer for all of the metallics on the whole miniature so this stage will take a little while and i'm doing my best here to keep it off the areas that i don't want to be metallic because i really want to maintain that nice underpainted white so i can get the best results from my glazed base coats slowly going around the miniature picking out all the bits of metallic and there's, there's little bits everywhere and it's on different layers with fabrics going over the top of them as well so we've got surcoats and livery coats and things mixed amongst plate armor and chain mail so just take your time work your way around and try and keep it as neat as possible the reason I'm doing the metallics first is because there's so much metallic on this miniature that I wanted to make sure that I, I got the most of the metallics down so that any mistakes I do make and that I go over the line, so to speak, I can touch up with a bit of grey and white first rather than messing up the, the nice highlighting I'll intend to do later on on the rest of the miniature. And while I've got the brownish colour metallic down, I'm moving on to some Garagax sewer. And the plan here is to pick out a lot of the leather belts and straps and things. And the reason I'm doing this stage now as well is because they're so close to a lot of this metallic area. And it's going to be hard to see them and pick them out once I've gone in with the lighter metallic colours. So if I do the brown now in this area, any metallics that I um, put on later won't have this staining if this bleeds over at a later stage. And just like with the metallics, there's quite a lot of different areas that require this brown, so it's worth taking your time working your way around the miniature. I've decided to paint the gloves in this brown leather, and they will stand out when the rest of the metallics are a more silver colour. There's little straps and things all over the place, so just work your way around, take your time, and you'll be ready for the next stage. And the next stage, we're moving on to that more silver metallic, and this is black metal from Scale Color or Scale 75 as well. And yes, I did film the bit holding the bottle up, but for some reason it's gone missing. God knows what happened to that footage. Now, essentially here, we are covering all of the areas that are in that brownish decayed metal, apart from certain parts on the swords that I want to be gold, and we'll come to those in a little while. 
So this is very much like the previous stage where we're working right around the miniature, picking out all the areas. It's a little bit easier this time because you've already got the brownish metallic down. You can leave a little bit of the brown showing. That's part of the reason for choosing a brown base for it because it really helps add depth to the metallic. And it just happens to be my favorite recipe for doing metallics. You could just start with this if you wanted to save a little bit of time and didn't want that brown showing through. You could start with this black metal as the pure base coat for all the metallics as well. So this takes a little while, we've worked our way around, you've got the edgings of all of these chests and things at the back as well. But once it's done, you really have got through the, the bulk of the really fiddly stuff. And then while we're still with metallics, this is Game Air Silver, and it's a really bright silvery metallic, and this becomes the top highlight. Now here, I'm not covering anywhere near as much of the metallic area, so I'm placing it like on this visor here, at the long the top, and then quickly dampening the brush and just feathering out a little bit to blend it into those darker colours. Then again, working my way around the miniature, following a similar method, applied a little bit of the Game Air Silver there, and then thinning it and feathering it out so we end up with a highlighted area that blends into the darker shade as well and again working my way around the whole miniature doing this panel by panel so we get down to the, the what is the metal greaves I think here and the, the light's going to catch more at the bottom because it's hidden from, from sight at the top there so again I've started from the bottom and I'm just blending up to the top but not all the way and letting it feather out so we've got that sort of darker area blending nicely into the bright so now those few gold bits I mentioned. So this is Viking Gold, also from Scale Color, the Scale 75 Metallics range. And I'm just going over that decayed metal. And you can see it's a perfect base for the silver side or even the, the golds and bronzes as well. So just picking out the tops of the little fur de lis there. And on the handle, just towards the top, leaving it darker at the bottom on any sort of straps, anything that's raised a little bit more. So you're still seeing some of that decayed metal coming through. A lot less areas that need to be gold here. There's a little, I believe it's a, a chalice here on the back. Again, leaving lots of that decayed metal still showing, but just focusing where the light would hit. Then to highlight that gold, again from the scale 75, scale color range, this is elven gold and ever decreasing uh, highlights here. So hitting a much smaller area with these little dots in some places, making sure you're leaving both previous colors showing. And you end up with a really, really nice gold effect. So now it's time to start working on all of the non-metallic areas of the miniature. And my army is a yellow and blue colour scheme. And for the yellow, I base it all with this Nasdrag yellow contrast paint. For this miniature, there will be some shields and things that don't follow the same pattern livery as, as the rest of the army. So there's a slight difference for this unique character. But I'm still doing a half emblem effect on this shield. So I've, I've gone half in yellow. And I'm going to follow that over for the rest of the miniature half on this shield. I've already done half on one part of the lower surcoat as well. And when we get to the back, I've got to pick a point where the half line is going to end. So I'm kind of half hiding that in a crease, which very luckily is about halfway. And then just blending it out. And by using this contrast paint for this base layer, you can make sure that I'm smoothing it out so it's not pulling. The underpainting here really gives you a, a nice natural highlight built in already, which really aid you when you're trying to highlight later on. A lots of little extra details. We've got this sort of curled rope effect around the top of the helmet and every other strand I want to be yellow. The other strands I'm going to be leaving white. So there's those subtle differences from the rest of the army which should all be blue and yellow. For the base on the blue, I'm using a mega blue from Vallejo Express color. And much like the yellow, I'm just painting in the opposite sides in most cases on the miniature. When we get to an area where we're meeting the yellow, just worth taking your time and being a little bit careful so you don't mess it up and have the two colours bleeding together. But again, trying to keep these base coats as smooth as possible, allowing it to pull a little bit in the recesses so you get that natural shadow. This seems a little bit more streaky, but once it dries, it dries a lot flatter than it looks at this stage. So continuing with the army colours and I'm just making sure that the other half of this shield is blue so I'm being super careful here with this line down the centre picking that out first which is the half bit out of the way and then I can blend out to the rest of the body of the shield. And not everything has to be uniform, so you get a bit of choice about where you place these two main colours from the army. So in the back of the cloth here around the helmet, I've decided to make that all blue rather than in halved colours. You could have done it all yellow as well, but I wanted the contrast to, to the, the colour that's directly below it. 
So now I'm reaching for Contrast Blood Angels Red. And for this miniature, I'm just moving away from the standard army scheme and just adding the odd shield, the odd little bit of livery badge here or there in a slightly different colour. So for this shield here, I'm leaving half white. I'm adding a red line down the centre. And then as we move around to this one here, I've decided to make it half red and half white. And I follow that same pattern over to the shield that's on the top of his helmet between the antlers and then also over to the shields that are just below the hilt of his sword. Now we've got a, quite a few little small details to pick out and here is the Gore Grunt of Fern. I'm going to be using this on the wood on the chest that he's carrying. So for their orc head skin, I'm using Mantis Warriors Green and Orc Flesh. I'm using little reservoirs on my palette. I've actually put two in as neat colour and then a middle one where I've done a 50-50 mix. I did add a little bit of water on all of these afterwards just to add to the flow, but not an awful lot. And I'm just painting them on and then blending them together while they're still wet on the miniature. So keeping the darker tones around the bottom and around the drawer and then painting them back into the crevices and this will be a nice guide later on when I highlight. Now for the tongue and inside the mouth I'm using a mix of Sigvold Burgundy, Volpus Pink and Bal Red. And again I'm working with all three open at the same time, this time just straight out of the pot. Starting with the darkest colour towards the back of the tongue and the mouth and then wet blending in straight away with the, the lighter one and ending in Bal Red at the end. Even add a little bit of thin red on top of the green skin around the drawer and the nose as well, just to add a little bit of warmth into that colour. Next up, I'm using a little bit of Agarash Dunes, and this is just a perfect sort of yellow brown to add into the top where there looks to be a little bit of hair between the antlers. Then back to the browns, and this time Saigor Brown, which is perfect for some more of the accoutrements that are on the back of the night. So this is sort of looks like a round drinking vessel, whether that be water or wine, and it's just a nice base colour that's slightly different from the other browns we've already used. Continuing with the browns, we're using Speed Paint this time from Army Painter, and this is hardened leather, and this is a, a brighter orangier brown again. So there's more contrast between the, the number of different shades that were brown that we've used on the miniature, and this is a, a laced pack that's tucked up amongst everything else. It just makes it stand out a little bit more by being a slightly different shade. Now there are some other wraps and strapping that are on the back of the knight as well and I've chosen some skeleton hoard over this. We've already got a, a, a whitish grayscale layer there and it goes extremely well over that and gives you this really nice effect just as it is and it's very very simple to highlight later on. I also took the opportunity to use the same colour on the antlers. I had a little look at some pictures of, of antlers. I, been told off by people before in videos for horns putting the darker colour at the wrong side and uh, I've seen some examples where it looks lighter towards the end of the antlers. Quite often antlers just look the same colour throughout but I wanted this to be a little bit stylized, so I've gone with a lighter at the tips so using that skeleton hoard to go from about three quarters of the way up leaving the, the white tips at the end. And now on to contrast wildwood, which is a darker colour, so I'm going to be aiming at that bottom quarter or third and just adding a little bit more depth there. Now back to Mantis Warriors Green. I've thinned this 50-50 with water and I'm just using this on the melted candles. That's what it looks to be coming out of this lantern here. Looks like they're all swinging out and spinning out all over the place. It's slightly strange. It looks slightly ethereal. And they use green in the studio paint job. So I thought I'd copy that and or use something very, very close to it. That's pretty much all the base colours down and I'm heading to oil wash territory now and this is a really mixed oil wash from Scale 75 or Scale colour range from their Soil Works range and this is called Grease. It's a very very subtle colour, nothing too much and I'm just using it instead of something like an Agrax Earthshade. Now these are obviously white spirit based so you want to be quite careful with them, not slop it on as thick as you would an Agrax Earthshade but I find that placing it over Scale 75 metallics never causes any issue quite often when you use oil paints you like to protect the surface first with a varnish usually a gloss varnish but it works absolutely fine over these scale 75 metallics if you're using it over other metallics since the first time doing it just try it out a little bit work on a small area you don't want to be taking your paint off with it but i'm just adding it into the recesses oil paints tend to run into the recesses really really nicely and the joy of oil paints are you can tidy them up afterwards with a little bit of clean white spirit and just take it off flat surfaces whereas something like agrax earth shade will pull and it will stain but we'll come back to that later on after it's fully dried and with the final stages of the oil wash going on the miniature's 
gameable if you wanted to now you can finish off the basin and, and, and be done with it we've highlighted the metallics we've adding a wash to the metallics already and because we use the underpainting method and contrast style paints you've already got some natural highlights built into the fabric areas and things as well and the miniature looks quite cool but i will come back and do lots more highlights yet and really kind of push it on a little bit more and i'll talk you through how i do that and the process doing that moving forward miniature realms is proudly sponsored by baron of dice premium wargaming dice over 500 styles, over 4,000 customer reviews. Welcome to the best dice on the planet. So now we begin the highlight layers. I'm using Avalanche Sunset and Phalanx Yellow from Games Workshop from Citadel. And I've put a splodge of each of those paints on my wet palette and thinned them slightly. And slowly I start to build up layers. So we're leaving some of the darker area that's already there. I'm re reinforcing the yellow towards the bottom of this shield. You can put it to the top if you want. It's entirely up to you. I find it's quite good to have a contrast between top and bottom. You can choose which way around and build the highlights towards one of the others, but then also edge highlight all the way around and you just get this nice stylized effect and then we move over to the edge of the, the sort of the tabards and the livery coats and things and just start to work your way around the miniature you'll have just seen a short advert for baron of dice who are very kindly sponsoring the channel at the moment and it's well worth clicking on the link in the video description and there's a discount code there as well they have an absolutely fantastic range of dice loads and loads of different styles and things and i think they're going to be adding quite a lot more this year so if you're into your old world stuff they do have a fantasy range with lots of themes that might well match there what you may see me doing here is adding a little bit of color around the edge where I want to highlight it and then I wet my brush and blend that color in so you don't have so much of a significant line. Where we get to areas of the miniature where the folds in the fabric are more prominent, I use the edge of my brush some points to keep a nice straight line and where I can't I just use nice thin lines using the point of the brush you see that I'm focusing a brighter color more paint towards the the bottom of the miniature it's less likely to reach shadow there and then when I need to just wetting that brush and blending it out a little bit more as we move on to the phalanx yellow here I'm just concentrating right on the edge so it's an edge highlight but I'm using the side of the brush to make it nice and simple so no thin lines required from the tip don't need much control to do that if you're able to position the miniature so your brush is side on it does all the work for you and just focusing the color around the edge and then towards the bottom where i've decided it's going to be brighter so we get this nice transition from the top to the bottom with the bottom being brighter in this case and then making it pop by just adding that edge highlight around the end can use similar methods on the folded fabrics as well so I'm adding a highlight to the edge I started off with some little dots towards the top and then as I get to the bottom of the flowing robes there I, I do a longer line here yeah, very very thin lines picking out where there's some little highlights showing just little things to 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 sort of suggest that the, the fabric is blowing and moving and things and then again as I get towards the bottom I'm just thickening it up more add more lines in and start to blend out and glaze so it doesn't look quite so harsh and you can't see those brush strokes quite so so heavily this works at the top too so i'm focusing on the lighter areas around that front edge so you get that real change in color from what's close to his neckline and the armor there to the brighter edge which is that much brighter yellow and again is it cartoonistic yes it probably is that's the style i'm going for here but i think it looks really cool you can see now as we return back to the yellow on the back, it's the same methods yet again, but we're just building up those colours. So where I focus towards the bottom of the flowing surcoat there earlier on, I'm doing the same with this brighter phalanx yellow, but just leaving that a little bit less. And it really just starts to build up those layers and pop and really stand out and look cool. In terms of highlighting the blue, we're using Royal Blue from Model Color and a Marth Blue from Fantasy Games, Scale 75 again. And the methods are exactly the same as they are with the yellow. So we're going in and we're slowly building up layers. You've got the guidelines that are there from the, the contrast style paint, which gives you the highlights already, or at least the, the outlines of them. So you're really just tidying up and, and filling in here with these colors. The shield, I'm focusing the brighter colour towards the bottom this time and leaving a, a slightly shadowed area towards the top under the lip of the edging. And then the Amath blue comes into effect and we're doing those edge highlights on the, the edges of the fabric, nice and neat and straight using the side of the brush where we can. And then towards the bottoms of the cable, we'll start to, to do those 
feathered lines and make them a little bit brighter. If they're looking a little bit bright, you can just get some of the royal blue, thin it right down with water and just glaze back over the top and it really blends it out and gets rid of some of those brush strokes. I wanted to accentuate those shadows a little bit, so I just got some of the Omega Blue, the original base coat, and just painted it into the, the crevices here, blending it out slightly, and it just really adds some depth back into the miniature. You often find on flat areas like a shield like this, just adding in a thin layer right around the edges just accentuates things like that center line there. Now it's, it's unrealistic and it's stylized, but it, it does look right on the miniature for some reason. So sometimes you just stick with what looks good with, rather than what feels like it should be realistic. And we've got a few other colours to highlight as well. So this is Evil Sun Scarlet and Wild Rider Red. And I'm going to be using them in exactly the same way as I used the yellows and blues. So just building up the colours on the bottom of the shields and adding some edge highlights. So we have multiple areas of brown to highlight as leather. This is Flat Earth and Tan Earth. That's the first combination. And I'm using it on all of the original belts and straps that we use. So this is highlighting the Garagak sewer and very much focusing on the raised edges here come back afterwards with the tan earth as well and just focus on the edges as well just a little bit less and it really just makes it look like wool leather you can have some little dashes here little marks and things and you'll be surprised how effective it looks sticking with model color we have orange brown and light brown as the next duo and it's the perfect color to highlight the more orangey browns that we have on the back of the miniature and for the final combo here, we have Saddle Brown and German Pale Brown, and they've got a reddish tone to them, so they're very good at highlighting over that reddish brown that you find as a base with the, the Saigor Brown. So this kind of this leather gourd or, or drinking vessel here will look really, really nice. Highlight from those, just focusing, drawing some lines on, blending it in, and then feathering it back out afterwards. Here I am returning to a little bit of Saigor Brown just to use as a glaze to blend the bottom, the dark colours back into the lighter top. When I had all those browns on the palette, I use a little bit of the flat earth to add a little bit of a mid-tone to these lower parts of the antlers here. Then at the same time, adding a little bit of Saigor Brown to the very base of the antlers and to a little bit of the areas where there would be some shadow and it just really made them pop and tidy them up. So back to model colour and Vallejo and we've got a Racky Sand and Off-White and a little bit on the palette and some water with each just to thin them and make them flow nicely. And there's just some thin line highlights really on the areas that we originally base coated in Skeleton Horde. It's also perfect for a quick highlight on these little laced areas. And then I use the off-white on its own just to highlight the candles a little bit and I will come back with a purer white later on in the video. I also did the same with the very extremities of the antlers. Sticking with model colour, we've got German Camo Bright Green, we've got German um, Camo Extra Dark, we've got Yellow Green and Dark Yellow as well. We've got them all on the palette, and I'm using that bright green as a mid-tone really here. I'm focusing around the lower ends of the face where it's the darkest. And I've got that darker colour just if I need to blend it back a little bit. But I'm focusing with that bright green and doing fine line highlights, picking out the most highlighted areas, the raised areas, and then I'll slowly blend up to those yellow greens. Then as we get to those areas, I'm trying to be as neat as possible. I'm trying to do some thin lines following the detail on the miniature, not worry about getting into the, the crevices too much and just focusing where the light would hit. As we get to the back of the head, you'll see I'm almost painting in edge highlights or the, the very extremities just to really build in where the shape is of that miniature to accentuate the lighter areas versus the dark. Then using a little bit of Citadel Contrast Orc Flesh, which is one of the base colours we use, I'm just going back in where the crevices are just to reinforce some of those shadows. You're almost glazing back in there a little bit. So you can go into those crevices, blend out a little bit, and the effect you can see there on the screen, it really just kind of makes it more three-dimensional and really adds a little bit of warmth and depth back into the, the, the green, which can look a little bit washed out if you over-highlight. Sticking with contrast now, I'm just using a little bit of Skeleton Horde and that's perfect just to yellow up those teeth a little bit, make them look a little bit more dirty, just leaving the tips of them still white and allowing it to run into the, the mouth area a little bit. It doesn't matter if it's such a, a mild colour, it just makes the gums look a little bit dirty. 
And now for the bold titanium white from Pro Acryl, which I, I used in that underpainting layer with the airbrush. But it's such a brilliant bright white that it's perfect to really pick out the white areas. So I'm just doing edge highlights here and, and highlighting and focusing to the, towards the bottom of the shields, very much like I did with the yellow and the blue earlier on. So I'm working around the, the four shields that I have in white before adding a few touches to the white areas on the melting candles on the top of the antlers as well. Now it's time to return to those metallics which feel like we finished such a long time ago and I'm using a little bit of clean white spirit on an old brush just to make sure that any areas that are a little bit dull that have pulled a bit too much for the oil paints I can just take off those flat areas and make it shine a little bit more. Then using some Game Air Silver, which was that top highlight on the metallics, just to go back and pick out any areas that I don't feel that are bright enough or popping enough. And finally, we're on to the finishing stages of the miniature, and I like to brush in some dry pigment onto my bases before adding some tufts and then some mud effects as well, which always look fantastic, especially when you spread them up the back of the cape. Then, of course, this head's going to bleed with a sword through the eye. So I've got some blood for the blood god. Started by focusing a dollop right in the eye there where the, the sword had gone in. And then just using a little bit of water to, to blend it out and make it look like it's run. So it's not too thick and, and unrealistic. We don't want too much blood everywhere. Allowing a little bit to trail down into the mouth and around the teeth and gums as well. I added some splashes to the, the side of the clothing where that sword will have gone in because it would have definitely been a splash. Again, less is more here. Try not to be too heavy. And when the splodge of paint is a little bit too thick, just use a little bit of water on your brush, dab it on and it just feathers out and blends out a little bit and looks a little bit more realistic. Then of course this head has been severed as well, so we need a little bit of blood at the back. And you, and you could have quite a lot, but again, I'm trying to be enough so it shows up, it is Warhammer after all, but not so gory that it looks like my nine-year-old has painted and got carried away. A quick tidy up of the base with a black rim and we are done. I love this miniature, I had so much fun painting him, there's so many cool little details. And there's, there's something really fun about painting an individual character for miniature rather than one of a big group of 20 or 30 when you know you've got so many more to do. It's nice knowing that that's it. It's a one-off and, and you don't have to return to it. And I just love painting single miniatures in that way and spending a little bit more time on them. I made a deliberate attempt to still show the early stages and, and show that even with character four miniatures like this, you can still start with base coats of contrast paint like I do with a lot of my rank and file troops and things as well. But I did take a little bit more time in this video to explain how I highlight to a slightly higher standard, thin the paints a little bit more, talking about feathering and blending and layering and glazing a little bit more. And hopefully that's useful to you and you enjoy the difference if you've watched a lot of my videos videos before. I'm pretty happy with the way the miniature has come out. It is for my army. It is not designed to win any painting competitions. So there are still a lot of refinements that, that could be made. But hopefully it will give you guys an idea of how you may approach the, the characters in your armies. But still use the same methods that, you, that I have been showing in my videos for the, the regular troops as well. But let me know what you think in the comments. How have you been getting on with your own armies? What are you working on at the moment? I find it really interesting to hear what people are up to. If you're working on Bretonians, what colour schemes are you working to? Obviously, the methods in this video can be transferred to many different schemes. You just use differences to, to the blue and the yellow and so on and so on. If you need any advice about what colours you may choose, if you are copying the style and the methods, but maybe needed different things, let me know in the comments. I'll be more than happy to help if I can. Feel free to hop over to the Discord. There will be a link in the video description and you can chat painting and gaming and all things. There's a lovely, growing and friendly community there. So I'd love to see you over there and you can share your pictures of what you've been working on, which is really, really nice to see as well. And something you can't do in the comments on YouTube. If you've enjoyed the video, please do give it a like. It does help it get seen by other people and comments and things like that really, really help as well. And if you'd like to support the channel even further, I do have a Patreon. There's currently five tiers. The lowest tiers are all about just sort of supporting the channel and joining the club, so to speak. And as you get up towards the, the top tiers, there's coaching and even online painting tuition and things as well. So go and, go and click on the link and have a read and, and maybe join if you feel like you'd like to support in that way. But no pressure. But thank you very much for watching. Take care and I'll catch you soon.